Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video, continuing my series on lines. And uh, this one I'm going to talk about general form. I've already done a video on slope intercept form and slope point form. So if you haven't seen those, you might want to check those out because those are by far the most important forms of a line. General form doesn't have as many uses, but it's still fairly common. Where you might see general form is when you're asked to find x and y intercepts of a line. You also might see it if you're solving a system of equations. And uh, it's, it's fairly good for that as well. So general form, the a, b, and the c value don't hold something with meaning as significant as something like slope. They're just placeholders or parameters, and they have to be within a certain restriction. So a has to be a whole number. So it cannot be negative. It must be a positive whole number. So it cannot be 0. Or actually, I guess I could say the fact that it can't be 0, I can say it could be a natural number. Let me change that then. So uh, it has to be a natural number. So it has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I guess it could be 0, but then it wouldn't be really be general form. It would just be uh, there would be no x coordinates. So then it would just be a horizontal line. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, these two guys can be negative, but they must be, uh, they, or they cannot be fractions or decimals. So they must be integers. So they can be negative or positive, but no decimals or fractions. All right, so let's have a look at, and uh, look at a few different examples of something that is general form and something that is not general form. So this guy is general form. The leading number in front of my x is positive, and it's not a fraction or a decimal. And the other two are not fractions or decimals, but one of them is negative. That's no big deal. And then it equals zero. The other two I have here, these are not general form. So this has a negative in front of my x. Cannot have a negative in front of your x. The number in front of your x, your a value must be positive. And then here I have a, a fraction in front of my x. All right. So let's look at an example, or let's look at what this is best for. So I do this in all my videos, guys, for slope, uh, for the slope, uh, the line, forms of a line, slope intercept, slope point. So this is best for finding the x and y intercepts. That really is the best way I can come up with. It doesn't have really great application for graphing, but of course, if you find the x and y intercepts, those are pretty sweet for graphing. Um, for finding the from a graph. The only way to do it from a graph is to find, you know, another form first and convert it. All right, so let's look at how we can graph this guy. So the two ways that we can graph it are finding the intercepts themselves or actually changing to y equals mx plus b. So, or slow point form if you, if you like that, um, which, again, is not easy to do. All right, so let's have a look at this and, um, you know, graph it in two different ways. So I'm going to do this by finding the x and y intercepts. I'm just going to take a sip of Gatorade here, guys. Give me a second. All right. So if I want to find the x-intercept, what I need to remember is that every single x-intercept always has y equals 0. So we need to let y equal 0. So what you notice ends up happening is that when you let y equal 0, so I'm just like subbing in 0 here, this part of the equation actually just disappears. Okay, so that guy goes away. So, you know, really immediately you can sort of me almost mentally do this, right? You can take this, cross it out, and then take my 8 to the other side, subtract 8 from both sides. And so I get 4x is equal to negative 8. And then divide both sides by 4. And then I get x is equal to negative 2. So there's my first point. That's not negative 2, that's positive 2. So there's my first point right there, negative 2. So the next thing I have to do is find my y-intercept. So my y-intercept, of course, I let x equal 0. So I cr cancel out the first part of this guy. So I have 4 times 0 plus 2y plus 8 is equal to 0. So that's gone. So then I have 2y subtract 8 from both sides. So 2y is equal to negative 8. So I divide both sides by 2. Then I get y is equal to negative 4. So I go ahead and plot this guy at negative 4. And then all I have to do is connect this up with my line tool. So let me see if I can give that a shot. 
So I want to sort of connect this right through and extend, not just connect the two points, guys. So here we go. Here's my arrow. Arrow, just like that. And there it is. I've graphed this line in general form by finding my x and y intercepts. Now, the other possible way of doing it would be changing to y equals mx plus b. So if I change to y equals mx plus b, um, I just use slope and y-intercept to do it. So uh, first thing I need to do is I need to get the, the six uh, the six y by itself. So <clears throat> my students always say if the if the number in front of the y is positive, I keep it where it's two. If it's negative, I change sides. So because it's negative, I'm going to flip it to the other side. And that means I'm only dealing with positive. So I have 3x minus 18 is equal to 6y. So in order to get something by its, uh, the y by itself, which is what I want for y equals mx plus b, I usually almost have to end up dividing each term by what's in front of the y. So divide by 6, divide by 6, divide by 6. So that gives me, so 3 over 6 is 1 over 2x. 18 divided by 6 is 3. And that's equal to y. So I got y is equal to 1 half x minus 3. So there's my y equals mx plus b form, or slope intercept form. Now I just need to find um, find the graph. So first thing I'll do is I'll write my m, that's equal to 1 half. So that means I have a rise of 1. So rise of a run is my slope, so rise of 1. That means I'm going to go 1 up, and then my run is on the bottom, so that run is positive, so it must be 2 right. So remember, positive means upper right. If it was negative, it means down or left or whatever. So if my run, my rise is positive 1, so 1 up. My run is positive 2, so 2 right. And then my b is negative 3. So I plot my, my y-intercept first, negative 3 right there. And then I just use my instructions. So my set of instructions is 1 up, 2 right. There's my other point. All I have to do is connect them up, just like that. There it is. So I'll just draw my line just like this. So guys, there's two examples of graphing uh, general form. Let's have a look at another example. Uh, in this example, I'm asked to find the equation of the line. So there's no easy way of getting around this, guys. We have to find something other than general form. So you need to find slope-intercept form, which is what I'm going to find. You could also find slope-point form. That would be a little bit harder to work with. So... <clears throat> I'm going to identify my y-intercept here is 3, and then my slope. So my I need my slope, of course, and my y-intercept, so my y-intercept is 3. My slope, if I make my triangle, I'm just going to draw it up this way this time. And uh, that's a rise of 3, so I'm going to up 3 and then right 5. So that gives me 3 over 5. So my equation is y is equal to 3 over 5x plus 3. So what I want to do is I want to get everything on one side. And the only thing I have to move here is this y. So I'm just going to take that to the other side. So I have 0 is equal to 3 over 5x minus y plus 3. So I have everything on one side. So with almost general form, the only problem is I've got this pesky little fraction. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of that by multiplying everything by 5. So I'm going to do that. So let me write it out. So, times everything by 5. So, 3 over 5 times 5 is actually just 3. Well, the 0 times 5 is 0, so I can keep that there. And 3 over 5 times 5, that's 3x. And again, guys, you can trust your calculator for this. Negative 1 times 5 is negative 5y. And then 3 times 5 is 15. Now, I don't like the 0 in the front, so I just usually change it to the back. 0. All right, so there it is. That's how you find the equation of a line in general form from a graph. I know you're saying, why would I want to do that? Really, guys, there is absolutely no reason why you would, except that your teacher asks you to do it. So there's no practical reason for it. Y equals MX plus B is the best form from a graph. All right, let's do one example, which is if you got two points given to you. 
So if we got two points given to you, again, the only option is you can go slope, slope point form or slope intercept form. I'm going to go slope point form just for this example. So I'll do this one real quick, guys. So I use my slope formula to find the slope of this guy. So y2 subtract y1 over x2 subtract x1. And I get my slope, so that's going to be 8 subtract 2 all over 6 subtract 3. If you're not familiar with slope formula, guys, just Google on my channel. Look about my channel, a few different versions of it. There's a bunch of videos. So that gives me a slope of 2. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Alright, so I'm going to choose a point to choose. So remember, slope point form is y subtract y1 is equal to m x subtract x1. And uh, if you like, guys, you can find the y intercept here as well. But I like slope point form because I don't have to go through that calculation of finding y. So then, or finding a wider step. So then my point I'm going to use, I'm going to use this one. So it's going to be 3, or y minus 2. Sorry, my x, my y1 value is 2. So this is y1. And then 2, x minus x1. So it's x minus 3. So what I want to do to get this in slope, in general form, is I want to distribute through with my slope. So I'll go like this. y minus 2 is equal to 2x minus 6. So add 2 to both sides. Add 2, add 2. So then I have y is equal to 2x minus 4. So this is actually in y equals mx plus b form right now. So the only thing I have left is to take that y over. So I got 0 is equal to 2x minus y minus 4. And there it is. That's my general form. Uh, and you want to tack the zero on the other side. You can't. I'm not going to rewrite for there, just the sake of time. All right, guys. I hope this video helps. My voice is gone. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, share. Uh, give me a comment if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in class.